Have you thought about actually starting a delivery business with one van? You know, sometimes people talk about, well, I want to start a transportation business, but I, I'm thinking about having a fleet. Why do you need a fleet? You can start with one van. And the thing is, when you start little, you have the opportunity to measure what's happening in the industry. You can avoid very costly mistakes. And there are a lot of things, there are a lot of benefits that come with uh, starting a delivery business with one van. Let's talk about that. Let me first give you an overview here. Basically, when we talk about transportation business, a lot of folks believe that, hey, you know, I just need to have my cargo van, my Sprinter van, and just walk, just drive around town, and I have a transportation business. It's way, way, way more than that, okay? When we talk about transportation businesses, you have a lot of options. And this is why sometimes we tell our viewers and our business clients, for that matter, to always know how to position yourself. It's it's very important to know, like, whether or not you want to be, you want to do a, let's say you want to do a first mile, middle mile, or last mile a lot of a lot of uh, owner operators don't think in those terms they think you know i'm just gonna go on, on load boards I'm, I'm just gonna grab whatever loads are available i'm gonna haul them and that's it this is why you you are this is why your ass is not generating revenue because you know you don't know how to position yourself so when we talk about transportation business right now i, I want you to think deep in terms of how do i do i want to do first mile middle mile or last mile First mile meaning like you are getting the the, the loads from uh, the manufacturer all the way to the uh, to like to the to the middleman, okay? And we have an, another show where we actually uh, dissected the whole difference between first mile, last mile, and uh, middle mile. But what I'm trying to say here is that it's very important to understand that when we talk about transportation, there is a lot of things you can do, and sometimes you don't even have to deliver goods only. You can deliver people. Oh yeah, oh yeah. When we talk about transportation, you can actually deliver people. Okay, so I want you to I want you to open up your mind. I want you to cast a wider net when you think about you want to start a delivery business or a transport transportation business with one van. Think about think think big. Okay. By the way, boss, welcome back to the show. It's really a pleasure to have you here. We just love having this sort of conversations every now and then. What I want to do here is that when we talk about opening a transportation uh, business with one van, you have to choose the vehicle appropriately. And this depends on this on how you position yourself. What kind of market? What kind of niche you want to go after? Do you, if you, there are certain niches that you can't use a cargo van, certain niches you can't use an eighteen wheeler, some some niches you can't use a semi. So you got to be really clear about how you want to position yourself. Let me give you a few pro tips first. Because before we talk about a transportation business, after analyzing how what kind of niche you want to you want to open your business in, it's important to have a clear idea about the fundamental cost, the foundational cost, the the startup cost. You know, the thing is, anytime we talk about cost, we have to be really careful because we're speaking to the whole United States, and a lot of people will say, "Well, you know, you 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 throw in numbers, and those numbers don't apply to my to my geography." I get that. I get that. Okay, I get the fact that if I'm saying you need to actually spend five thousand dollars a year or a quarter when it comes to gas, whether you are in New York City or you are in, uh, you know, like uh, I don't know, in Toledo. I mean, those are not the same thing. Or if you're somewhere in in uh, in, uh, in Alabama, you don't have the same sort of cost. Okay, I get that. But this is I'm just giving you an idea to say, listen. Though here are the, the expenses I want you to pay attention to. If you are going to start a thriving transportation business, pay attention to fuel expenses. Boss, I'm telling you, those expenses can really add up real fast, real fast. Okay. By the way, I want to quickly remind you of today's topic. I'm having a conversation. I'm explaining to you how to start a profitable transportation business with one van, only one van. We're not, we're not talking about having a fleet here. Okay, you are a solopreneur, you are an owner operator, you have your van, you have a, your, 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 your cargo van, your sprinter van, okay, and then to a certain extent you have your, your box truck, and you're trying to survive with that box truck, you're trying to survive with that sprinter van, you're trying to survive with the, the cargo van, do something. So please, pay attention to your fuel expenses, pay attention to the marketing for the business, you gotta market the business. Those loads ain't coming simply because you, you happen to be, you happen to have a very shiny van. No, boss. It, it ain't happening that way. You need to market the business. And I keep telling you, it's not about just going on load bars and trying to really grab here and there a few loads from the load bars from that, whatever. No, no, no. There are other ways to look for 
for loads. There are other ways to look for local shippers. You, want, you have to buy the necessary equipment according to the type of service you want to provide. You have to actually uh, acquire the licenses that you need for the business. And you need to get your vehicle insured. You need to get that van insured because that van is your assets, literally. Now, let me give you the approach that we, you need to pay attention to. The approach is that you need to have, like you need to clarify in your mind, you need to be sure that a transportation business is profitable because there are some uh, some players online that try to really discourage you and say, well, transportation is no longer, is, is, is saturated. You know, it's, it's very competitive. Rates are going down, blah, 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 blah. I'm here to tell you here, standing on the shoulders of our team members who have been doing this for 35 years boss this industry is pr is profitable more than ever is more profitable than ever you are making money people are banking people are people are making bank right now it's not about it's not about rates are going down it's just because you have to find your niche you have to find your positioning you have to uh, see if you remember earlier i was just talking to you about how do you position yourself first mile middle mile last mile that's number one number two how do you charge for your services see a lot of folks a lot of a lot of uh solopreneurs a lot of owner operators they all they only think in terms of rate per hour rph but rph is dead boss rph is like something that it was like you know, like 20 30 years ago nowadays you have rpm rate per mile you have rpc rate per contract okay rpl rate per load this is how you make money because if you start talking about, you know, RPH, I'm charging like, you know, I'm going to drive, I'm going to drive eight hours and I want you to pay me $20 an hour. People start thinking already, okay, hmm, he's too cheap or he's too expensive. Like, you know, like I, I want an RPH of $35, $35 or $45. Okay. So what's next? You want to have the queen, of, you, you know, you want to have the crown of the queen of England or whatever, or the king of England. You know, listen, the bottom line here is that you want to switch how you, how you, how you, how you uh, charge for your services go for rpm rate per mile go for uh, rpc r rate per uh, contract go for rpl rate rate per load okay but definitely transportation is is booming a transportation business is profitable you can make anywhere from uh, one hundred thousand dollars to 350k and i'm talking about clear 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 net expenses okay your net income three hundred fifty thousand dollars free and clear boss and we have the data to back it up now let me give you the steps i want you to follow right now if you want to start a profitable transportation business with one van okay let's have a let's have a clear idea about that the, the very first step I want you to really uh, take right now is to do your research, okay? Doing research doesn't mean you have to actually do a, go on Google, whatever. No, no, no. When it comes to transportation, everything is uh, geography-based, okay? I mean, you know, like you can't be somewhere in New York trying to compete with uh, with a, a, deli a delivery driver, like an owner-operator somewhere in Texas. No, it's, it is geography-based. Now, meaning what? It means that when you when you choose to to like, like if you carve out for yourself a certain geography you need to be really careful about the neighboring geographies let me explain if you want to if you want to if you want to load if you want to haul loads in new york city you can't do this without taking into account what's happening in the tri-state area you know this is important like like, like if, if you were to ignore what's happening in jersey if you were to ignore what's happening in Connecticut, then you really have not, you have not understood what's happening in the industry at all because the trusted area is always important. The, metro, the metropolitan area is always important. You can't be in the city, you can't be in Manhattan and and and, and say you know I don't care about what's happening in, uh, in 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 Queens. I don't care what's happening in Long Island. I don't care what's happening in uh, in Brooklyn. I don't care what's happening in in, in the Bronx. You gotta care, or I don't care what's happening in uh, in uh, Mount Vernon. Like you gotta care about those things. Okay, so the bottom line here is that geography plays an important role. So when you do your research, you have to look at your primary geography, like the geography you, you can cover. It can be a city, it can be a county. Okay, and you have to select a niche, boss. Select a niche. What what kind of uh, loads you want to haul? Okay, 
mind you, you only have one van. Okay, you can do a lot of things. You can do a full delivery. You can do goods delivery. You can do moving delivery. You can do a medical items. You can be a, a medical courier, for example. You can you can do you can do a taxi service. You can do a, a service for e-commerce companies. Okay, you can do a, that. You can do medical transportations. You can do a lot of things. Okay, but you have to choose a niche. You have to select. You have to differentiate. This is how you differentiate yourself, boss. Okay, so that's the number two. That's the second thing I want you to do right now. The third thing I want you to do here is to choose the right vehicle. Remember, you only have one van, you only have one chance, boss. So you, so you better make sure that you have, uh, you have the van that you really need. Okay, whether it is a Sprinter van, whether it is a, a cargo van, or whether it is a, a, a box truck, make sure the van. See, it's not about the how beautiful or whatever how how beautiful the van is, right? Who cares about beauty? I mean, beauty is kind of cool. You you want to be comfortable, okay? That's, that's what it is because you will be spending eight hours a day in that van, sometimes uh, doing OTR, you know, driving from one state to, to another and you want that van to be comfortable. Okay. You want the van to have uh, basic amenities like Wi-Fi and, and whatnot. This is important. This is what, this is what's going to help you actually survive on those cold, lonely days, boss. Because remember, the radio ain't going to help you simply because you listen to radio. Sometimes you are going to face your own thoughts. If you're doing OTR, you know, you are going to face your own thoughts. It happens. It happens in the industry. Okay, so choose the right vehicle. Now you have to also think about how to uh, fund the vehicle too, though, because uh, you know if you have to, uh, do you want to buy it? Do you want to lease it? Okay, I mean we have covered this on other shows. There are, I mean, either options is possible, but there are there are the, the possibilities. The possibilities are different because if you want to if you want to lease a vehicle, if you want to lease a van, a cargo van, a Sprinter van, a box truck, it, it really depends on your uh, on your finances. And, but if you if you were to buy versus lease it, if you were to buy, for instance, you need to maybe put some down payment. Do you have the ten percent that the, the the lender is asking you? If you consider a cargo van, a new cargo van, or, or used cargo van, and uh, that's probably causing that probably costing you like forty five grand. And if they ask you to put ten uh, percent down, that's forty five hundred. Or if they ask you to put twenty uh, percent down, that's nine thousand. Do you have the nine grand? So there are there are we, we have covered this on our, on other shows. So I'm not really going to talk too much about this, but. The next thing I want you to do here is to arrange your finances, okay? Here I'm talking about you. Do you really clear enough some kind of a, you want to leave out all the kinks out of uh, your uh, proverbial financial closet, okay? Because you're going to need some cash. You're going to need some cash not only to acquire the van, if you don't have a van already, or you're going to need some cash to lease the van, but you're going to need some cash for startup capital, okay? Because things like uh, admin stuff, you need to file paperwork with the state. You need to actually, you know, you need to also... Uh, Make sure that you get the basic stuff. I mean, you know, those are things that you you'll need. Every company needs that, whether they are whether the company is in the transportation business or not. The next thing I want you to do here is to get the correct licenses and permits. Okay, and uh, the thing here is that when we talk about licensing and permit and permitting. There are two elements to pay attention to. You got to pay attention to the, to the state to where you're hailing from, okay? And the second thing is you have to pay attention to the niche you have chosen. Let me explain that. I mean, if you are in New York, the the, the requirements are different from uh, will be different from if you are somewhere in Alabama or you are in in uh, in Oregon or if you are somewhere in New, Me in New Mexico. The rules are different, okay? Transportation is a federal and state thing, okay? But if we're talking about purely, if you're doing purely uh, of like a van transportation within a state then you don't need to have authority you don't need to have authority you're pretty good you don't need to have an mc number and whatever and that number no once you cross state boundaries straight once you cross the state lanes then we're talking about something else so if you start doing otr then you might actually have to get authority okay so this is really important i want you to check that authority that that authority thing that authority think very seriously because it, it does have consequences if you get caught if the if, if cops pull you over and you don't have authority you are toast big time big time okay so you want to have you want to have the correct licenses and permits for example if you choose to have if you choose to haul refer loads like refrigerated refrigerated loads for example make sure you have the proper equipment in your in your cargo van sprinter van or, or or a box truck or whatever you have okay this is really important and last but not the least boss 
this is not even the last why am i saying this you want to get insurance you want to get insurance if you want to start a transportation business with one van you got to have insurance because that insurance is multi-layered though because i'm not talking about insurance just for the for the car for for the vehicle itself because you got you got to insure not, not only the vehicle but you have to insure yourself boss yourself okay and the thing i want to say here is that when we talk about insurance don't forget that you only need one bad luck or one instance of bad luck to actually put everything back like like one instance of misfortune to really shatter all your dreams so don't take that insurance thing for for granted you need to have your insurance don't play with it okay don't play with it Next thing I want you to do here is to actually promote your business. So if you want to start a transportation business and uh, with one van and start making money right away, okay, you got to promote your business because the whole thing here is that if your potential clients, boss, I just want you to picture this. Imagine all the hard work you, you have actually uh, done, right? You have uh, done a lot of preparation. You talk to to some 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 lawyers or somebody like uh, you actually went, went to uh, an ALC formation service. You have your business. You talk to the state to the to the state authorities. They send you a, a certificate of good standing. You actually have articles of incorporation or articles of organization based on your legal structure. You've done everything. Like think about it, you've done everything. You you even open a bank account. You got your EIN. Everything that you were supposed to get, you get it. You got it. Okay. Now imagine you did everything, but you're not able. Not nobody knows you. It's normal. It's normal. Like, you know, nobody knows you. It doesn't happen overnight. So if your potential clients are not aware of your business, they will not engage with you. So you got to really consider the marketing tools to promote your business and build your, and build your reputation as a transportation provider. The thing here is that when we talk about, we talk about promotion, promotion is a niche thing. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, you're not going to find promotion that is generic. No, it has to be specific to the niche that you're in. It has to be tailored it has to be really 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 bespoke otherwise it, it ain't gonna work don't try to fight the system don't try to fight it it is what it is this is how things have been going for many 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 years now and the thing i'm trying to say here is that it's important to know exactly what's uh, the kind of uh the kind of the kind of uh communication you want to have like the kind of ads you want to run ads on, on on facebook for example for your transportation business you want to do some cpc and sometimes and don't forget to actually have uh, your uh, company listed on google business okay so that if if um, people are searching like things locally your business will pop up and you want your business to pop up anyway okay and this is a source of free advertising okay and uh and then you get started you get started make sure you take care of the legal the legal aspect of things okay make sure like uh, you have your make sure you have your bank account you need to have a bank account you need to have uh, your ei and i've spoken about that before your employer identification number those things are, are not really complicated you can do it you can do it yourself don't let anybody wrestle that you telling you hey listen i'm gonna charge you one thousand dollars one thousand dollars and i'll do everything for you i'll uh, i'll get your ein and no 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 no, no. They're just, they're just confusing the hell out of you. You can do things yourself online. Just go on irs.gov and try to really and ask for your the EIN. Once you get the EIN, you should be good to go. Okay. You get your EIN, you can use the EIN to open a business, business checking account. You can also use that to get a lease or you can get, you can actually finance your van. Okay. So once you have all that, you should be able to, to go. But again, if there is one thing I want you to remember from this story is to always choose your niche is to always position yourself because this industry, you know, we like it, it's really weird. Anytime we get the uh, comments underneath our video, it's always, hey, yeah, this industry is saturated. Rates are going down. And I'm like, it's kind of funny. I mean, this is not what we are saying. I mean, you know, we're seeing the, we're seeing the opposite in our clients data. We're seeing the opposite. Our clients are making money. Our clients are banking because they have positioned themselves because they have actually differentiated themselves from the end from uh, other others in the industry and boss this is what i want you to do too i want you to really find a way to differentiate yourself to go after to like to go literally the extra mile the mile that is not traveled often so that you or a very few are on that mile and this is really where the money this is where you start making the money
Thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate it. In today's conversation, I was just explaining to you how to start a transportation business with one vein. I gave you the overview about the, the whole industry. I gave you a few pro tips in terms of cost analysis, okay? Then I gave you a few steps in, in helping you uh, making sure that you actually start a very profitable transportation business. And I just want to reassure you, transportation business is a very profitable venture. Thank you. God bless you. I'll speak to you another time. But until then, remember, stay marvelous.